Hey, Nathan Aiken here with uh, Tony Marita. We have just recently planted a church in Raleigh, uh, North Carolina, and we're a little over a year old, and so we're trying to share some lessons from um, our first year as a church plant. And so this, this session we want to talk about early launch lessons that we learned. Uh, first, we would say set clear expectations for potential members. Um, the church is kind of pictured in the New Testament as a, as a glimpse, a picture of the future coming kingdom. It's also said in, in Ephesians chapter 3 that it is unveiling the mystery of the universe. It's unveiling the wisdom of God. And you get further language uh, as well about the importance and, uh, and the nature of the local church. And so if we're going to be a good display of the glory of God, what we want is members that are reflecting this, this kind of change in their life, this kind of gospel change. So we would say set clear expectations early on for your members. It's unfortunate that most of the time more is expected of a frat member than is expected of a church member. And it's very easy to become a church member. You just walk an aisle and never really even ask any questions whether you know, you're a Mormon or not, but you can just join our church and, uh, because you walk an aisle. And so we would say set clear expectations for your members. We've done this through a membership process um, and, you, and there's all kinds of, of ways to do this, but the way we've done it is we set a class where we line out our vision, our values, um, what it looks like to be a church member, our beliefs, and, and so we really try to, to give a clear vision of what it means to be a part of a Mago Day church. And then we take them through a uh, transferring introduction where we ask them questions about, uh, can they explain the gospel to us? Can they explain their testimony to us? We want to make sure that they're actually believers, because if we're going to be a good picture of the coming kingdom, that means there's going to have to be kingdom citizens that are a part of, of your church. And so we kind of walk them through that process. And then I would just say to those of you that are going to plant churches, you're going to be accountable for these people. Hebrews 13 says that we give an account for this. And so we want to make sure that we know we can clearly line out those that we're giving an account for and that we're seeing them grow in, in, as a disciple of Christ. And so that's lesson one. Uh, I don't know anything you'd add to that. I just that last piece of church membership is so important, not just the class. That's pretty common, I think. But it's that uh, assessment form that they fill out. Um, that, that we give them. We're, we're trying to identify, you know, why they're leaving a church if they're an existing church member. Uh, we're asking them questions that may uh, red flag us to some problem. Just want to be very careful. And if we see something in that assessment that, that scares us or may threaten the unity of the church, we're going to meet with them one-on-one uh, -on -one individually. And so that piece has been really important, I think. Absolutely. Second lesson here is start small groups soon and invest in small group leaders. In, in many ways, this is more important than your public launch. We are trying to constantly tell our people and to break down this vision that people have of church. Growing up, you think that church is a building and you have these silly things about, you know, open up, look at the steeple, open it up and look at all the people. And the church is taught as a building or the church is an event. And so on Sunday we go to church. But instead, we're trying to teach our people that the church is a people on mission together for the glory of God. And so starting small groups and teaching the importance of community is as important as that public launch that you have on Sundays. And so we would say start this from the beginning because you want to really build in the DNA of your church multiplication and leadership development. And this is a way that you can do this by starting small groups from, from the very beginning. Again. Uh, don't give that away too quickly. Don't give leadership like that away too quickly and invest in those leaders. We, we hear oftentimes of small group leaders who have very little interaction with the actual pastors of the church where they're leading small groups. And, and that, that's unfortunate. This is the way that you are going to have your vision start from the top down and, and infiltrate into the lives of all the people in your church. And so you need to have constant contact with these small group leaders and be raising them up and then even have them be raising guys up so that as soon as multiplication is necessary, you've got guys that are ready, that are competent, that are qualified and are ready to lead small groups as you try to ad adequately shepherd all the people that will be under your care as, as a pastor. And so I don't know if you'd add to that. Uh, yeah, I would add to that just <clears throat> the importance of in the beginning, start, uh, we started in our home and I was basically the uh, lead pastor and, but it was a small group and we just uh, invested in the people we had in that core team for a few months. And what we were doing is basically we were giving an example of this is what small groups will look like in the life of the church. And so, like Nate said, we, we did, uh, it's not that we didn't value the launch, we just valued even more the small group dynamic, the relational dynamic in our local church, and we wanted that to be healthy 
uh, from the beginning, rather than growing really big and then trying to figure out how we're going to do small groups now. Uh, we started from the reverse with the small group idea, the concept, the vision, and and then launched, and and so uh, that that helped us a lot. Yeah, we really. I mean, Acts chapter two, forty-two through forty-seven is really what we pattern the life of our church after, and we wanted to, them to see that it's not only just about Sunday, but that that in Acts chapter two they are hanging out daily together in each other's homes, and it says they're breaking bread, there's fellowship, and so we wanted to intentionally run after Acts chapter to with our people and teach them that from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so then we have a, th a third lesson that Tony's going to talk about. Yeah, I would just say early on in a church, don't be surprised if people leave. Um, it's going to happen and, and hopefully it's for good reasons, not bad reasons, but it's going to happen for all kinds of reasons. Um, so don't be shocked. What we've found is that sometimes people will believe in maybe a part of your vision. Uh, for, for example, in my case, uh, uh, I have a passion for orphan care. It's part of our, our vision of our church. Uh, not the only thing we do, but that's, that's a part of what we do as a church. So we've had some people, hey, let's, let's go to this church. They love orphans. And then they hear about our membership process or, or the way we do small groups or that we don't have, you know, uh, a particular type of children's ministry or youth ministry, and they go elsewhere. So don't be surprised if people are attracted initially to your church, but they don't stay put. Um, fortunately, at Imago Day, we haven't had uh, folks from our core team leave except for two, and those were for, for good reasons, actually. So uh, we were able to retain uh, our core team folks for the most part. Um, I think everybody except for two. We had some people coming early to the congregation that eventually left for various reasons. Uh, and as a pastor, you grieve over those people who leave. Um, you, you certainly don't want them to leave. but. We just, we don't want to be a slave to, to numbers. We don't want to be idolatrous about numbers. Uh, we want to, to lead a church with the biblical convictions that we, we embrace. And we know that not everybody's going to embrace this. And uh, so we, we just come to learn, don't be surprised if people leave. Another thing I'll say related to this is be a church and be a leader that has face-to-face -face con conversations with people. When people begin to wonder about whether or not they're going to stick with your church plant. Uh, don't let all that happen via email. Just create a church culture where you sit down and you meet with the person, even if they're, they've already decided they're leaving. I would still sit down and talk with them. And, and this is rare, unfortunately. There's a lot of passive aggressive leaders in churches who try to just do things just on the phone, on an email, sort of talk around the issue about people. Be a head on conversation, face to face kind of person and leader and uh, create that culture in your congregation. Um, so I would add that to the list of uh, not being surprised if people leave. Yeah, and I would just add to that. I mean, one of the reasons I think we've kept the uh, good number of our core team is because we did set the expectations high. And we'll talk about this when we talk about uh, membership in another session, is that if you set the expectations high, people usually live up to them. And then even Lifeway has shown us some um, you know, numbers that talk about closing the back door to the, to the church. When you have membership classes and when you have clear set expectations for your people, it, it tends to close the back door because they know what you're about. And so you'll lose some people when you set those clear expectations, but you'll, I think, retain more. And, uh, and by God's grace, we, we've been able to uh, retain most of the people that we've set clear expectations for. And so. Mm -hmm.